Hi, and welcome to Classical Stuff You Should Know, a podcast about classical stuff. Um, ancient things, old art, old books, and their uses. I don't know. What? Uh, we're just, you know, we're just, their uses? Yeah. Their application to their, the modern Their day? application to the busy modern man. Wow, this guy. Um, anyway, uh, my name is Graham Donaldson, and I am joined by my colleagues, my conspirators. Okay. My fellows in learning, okay. Mr. A.J. Hannenberg. That's me. And Mr. Thomas Fletcher Magby. Hello. And gentlemen, when I came to our podcast recording studio today, studio. I, okay. I entered in through a door. It was a pretty boring door. There was nothing fancy about it. I think it had a window. I had to use a key card to get in. So there's like some technological advances. Uh, it was you a have portal. To hear an unpleasant boop. Yep. It was a <laughs> portal from the outside world of a very pleasant Texas spring day to a very climate controlled Texas building. But besides that, it was an uninspiring portal. I did not feel anything okay. as I went from one environment to the other. But AJ, it I feel as if that that doesn't have to be what doors are. Not yet. Yeah, not all doors are that way. Not well, all doors are boring. The door to hell is a cave entrance. Oh, my word. A hobbit's door is round. That's true. Uh, it has a handle right in the middle. Farm doors have that like top bottom thing going on, yeah. like barn doors. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Like the, Where they, like yeah. slide mm-hmm. like that. Or like the, the top one that has the top open uh-huh. and then oh, you can oh, talk to the horse sets. and yeah, then you sure. can close the top and yeah. not talk to the horse. Sure. Yeah. So anyway, so, um, but I wish there were more interesting doors that I could learn about today. Well, <laughs> lucky you. <laughs> So today we are talking about two of the most famous doors in history. What? Um, We're talking about doors? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. We're talking about doors. Do you not, are are you familiar with the- With uh, doors? With these I've used a door door, door before. Don't, don't, don't. Oh, yeah. The doors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Those doors. So today, which is all, which is based on the Aldous Huxley book. Did you know that? The doors? Is really? Based, yeah, I'll just Huxley wrote a book called like The Doors of Perception. Oh and that's man, what the band yeah, is yeah, there you go. That doesn't. That anyway, so we are talking does not today. Me. Uh, I wanted to jump back into art after doing literature for a long time, and I've done I think one art piece, and so yes. we're we're doing a few more art pieces and artists. And this today's art piece is The Gates of Paradise. Huh. It was not originally named The Gates of Paradise. I will tell you how it got that name as we go along. Okay, so. These were made by a fellow named Lorenzo Di Bartolo, who eventually became Lorenzo Ghiberti, right? Have you guys ever heard that name? Lorenzo Ghiberti? I have heard that name. Sure. That's all, but just by hearing the name, that's all I got. Oh, yeah, I just told you. You said the name, yeah. No, 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 but I've heard it before. I I, I listened as you said the name, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So he was born in 1378, about 20 kilometers from Florence, right? And Florence during this period is a, an, the epicenter of art and culture for the world, largely because of some very wealthy bankers who mm. would commission artworks, right? What's up? Then he was born kind of right into the middle of that Renaissance explosion of art and everything. So he originally lived with, with his dad, Sione di Ser Buono Corso Ghiberti. You're making this up. I am butchering that name, I nope, know. that was 100% perfect. That's who he lived with. Yep. And he lived with his mother, Fiore Ghiberti, who eventually went to, uh, left her husband. We don't really know why, but at some point she left to go live in Florence with a goldsmith named Bartolo di Michele rather than Siono di Buccanoso Ghiberti. Rather than Ghiberti, she went to a different guy. A goldsmith? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds about right. Nobody yeah. knows who was Lorenzo's real dad. Oh, this is unfortunate. Scandal. Yeah. yeah, scandal. So we don't really we don't really know when she had him or to whom. Right. But Fiore and Bartolo, the goldsmith, were in a common law marriage until Ghiberti's original dad kicked it, right? Oh. So she couldn't remarry until he was out of the picture and then he died and so they married in 1406 and bortolo this goldsmith turned out to be a great father oh there you go a very loving dad and so he kind of brought little lorenzo into his artwork he was a renowned goldsmith in florence and so he trained lorenzo and lorenzo didn't just confine himself to gold working uh he also made copies of antique metals and paintings and he received um, formal training as a painter from a fella named Gerardo Starnina. And so he wasn't just a goldsmith, right? He he was also a painter and worked on several other different disciplines that all kind of worked into his goldsmithing. Sure. Which 
is kind of what we were talking about last episode, right? right? Where he was a generalist, and so it enhanced his his skills as a goldsmith. Yep. Cool. Um, he eventually went to work in a Florence workshop of Bartolo di... Oh, sorry, this is... Um, that, I already said that. <laughs> so... Renzo, he went to, when he when the plague hit, he actually moved out of Florence to Rimini in the year fourteen hundred. Okay, um, he worked there in the palace of it's called Carl, Carlo Malatesta for I think that's the name of the palace for the Lord of Pizarro. Um, he was there given a room to paint in, and it's there that he sort of developed his love of painting. Was just he would sit in this room and just paint all day, and he was really into it. And then he heard of this contest happening in Florence and decided to return to Florence to apply for the contest. Now, the contest was put forward by the cloth, the cloth importing guild. And the cloth importing guild was having a contest to make doors for the baptistry of, of the Duomo in Florence. Oh, so the, wow. the giant cathedral sure. um, had a baptistry. And I think at this point, they still didn't quite have a dome for the <sighs> cathedral. Wow. So big open roof on the cathedral, which was really uncomfortable for everybody. And then he, no door. They're, they're like, all right, we need some nice doors for this wonderful baptistry we have. And it is beautiful. If you guys haven't, have, have either of you been I've to I've never Florence? been to Florence. Nope. Mm-mm. Okay. So you should really quick uh, Google pictures of the Florence Duomo. It's, well, I know what it looks like. I've, I've seen, seen pictures oh, okay. of it. I just haven't so seen it. So it's this wonderful it. work yeah. in like green marble and mm-hmm. white marble. Yeah. And it looks like it's lavishly painted, but it's all just stone. And the baptistry, which sets just outside, is this same kind of wonderful, beautiful marble. And it's just a little dome that sets outside in front. And so this was finished, I think, before the actual cathedral was done. And they wanted to commission some nice doors for it. Mm. For the eastern door, which would have been the ones facing the Duomo. So as you come out of church, you see these doors to the baptistry. Mm. And you weren't allowed to enter the church until you were baptized. So you would have exited these doors to be able to go into the cathedral for your very first time. Right. Cool. Okay. So they they commissioned this thing, and he he appeal, he applied at twenty one, and they everybody had to make the same sort of test piece, and it was a oh. bronze panel of the uh, of the sacrifice of Isaac. Right. Oh. Um. And so I think they they were allowed a year to do this, and hold on, I'm gonna find find my notes. Um, so yeah, the competition was in 1401 and they were given a year to complete the panel about the sacrifice of Isaac. There were seven semifinalists, but only two finalists and they were Ghiberti and Brunelleschi. Oh, Do you oh, know wow. that second yeah, name? Sure. He, did, yeah. he did the dome. Yeah. So Brunelleschi is himself an extremely famous architect from right. that period. And he's the guy who did, finally did the dome of the cathedral. Right. But at this point, I don't think he had quite finished the dome. I could be wrong on this. Don't don't like I could have my years all messed up, but judging by what Ghiberti was up to at this point, I don't think he was he had done the dome. I would love to see the like ones that didn't make it just to see <laughs> what like, the, of, like, the, the, like the mangled bronze, the, of, like sad, the sad Abraham one looked like. But they thought they were good enough to actually yeah, yeah, to it. enter yeah. the competition. Yeah. It's like those American like Idol contestants mache, who yeah. like, <laughs> think they're incredible. Yeah, yeah. No, I like this. So the the council that was supposed to decide between these two fellas couldn't pick between the two artists. Wow. And they had a long time and they were you know going back and forth. And eventually Brunelleschi's pride got the better of him and he left to study architecture in Rome. I think Dang. in preparation for like he wanted the to dome. see the domes in Rome to figure out mm. how to make the giant dome for the Duomo. Right. And so he was gone. And so they gave it to Ghiberti. And so Ghiberti won the commission, which was good because his piece was like structurally better oh, than Brunelleschi's. Uh, than Brunelleschi's. Brunelleschi's was a framework of bronze with the figures kind of put onto the framework. Mm-hmm. And so it was several different pieces. It was much more complicated. Whereas um, Ghiberti's was a single cast piece, mm-hmm. which meant that the figures were hollow. And so it was much lighter and used way less bronze and ended up also being stronger. Mm. And so it just as a as an efficiency of the use of bronze, it was a better piece. Yeah. And so I have sent you guys... I'm looking at it. The first panel. Is it the... Uh, the winning panel? Is that what I'm... Yep, the winning okay. panel. Okay, that's and the that's, one. The, that's the picture you sent us. Okay, I'm looking yeah, at it. Yeah, so can you, can you describe to the listeners what's going on on the panel? Well, Isaac is jacked, first of all. Little baby <laughs> Isaac is looking... He's tiny right. compared to his dad. Uh-huh. He looks like he's probably like eight. Yeah, but he's, uh, he's ripped. Um, I see Abraham has the knife and his arm is cocked, ready to stab his bound kid. 
Uh, there's an angel swooping down, being like, "Dude, no, wait!" Don't do it. <laughs> What's going on, on the top left? Is that a? That's the goat. That's the ram. The ram? Oh, yeah. okay. That's the it. ram. That's gonna. That's will just be chilling there. It's gonna be sacrificed. Right. And then what's, what's bottom left? Yeah, bottom, um, left. bottom left is two dudes sharing a donkey. That's what it looks like. That so I think it's a repetition of figures. You'll see that he's he's telling the entire story oh. rather than one scene of it. And so this is him putting his kid on the donkey. Oh, that's right. He's standing. Okay, there's his foot, and he's putting uh, Isaac on the donkey, and Isaac's looking at him like, "Yay, we're going camping." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is the one that won him the commission. Yeah. You'll also note that there is gilding on certain figures, right. but no gilding on yes. other figures, mm-hmm. right? So certain are gold and other, and some are just straight bronze. Okay. And it looks like it's hard to tell if bound Isaac is gold or not. It looks like maybe he's some of it's worn off. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. maybe. It's hard to tell. I mean, these were doors for a long yeah. time. And he's on did. a very beautifully made altar as well. Yes. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Okay, so in 1403, uh, he's, he got the formal contract with Bartolo's workshop, his, his dad's workshop, to, to do this. And mm-hmm. it instantly, overnight, became the most prestigious workshop in Florence. Wow. Um, in 1407, Lorenzo took over this commission and was basically prohibited from taking any others. And as pay, he got 200 florins a year, which are lot. gold coins mm. and to put it in perspective a bank worker of the same time period would make 45 to 50 a year Dang. Wow. so i think in modern times a florin would be worth about 1400 dollars. so this is about 300k a year to do okay. his work so he is not poor right he making some money uh and but he wasn't rich before this he was not rich before okay. this i don't think i mean i don't think he's probably doing too bad but the yeah, goldsmith for a dad or whatever. So yeah. So this first set of doors was 28 panels. It okay. was a long time. Um, and it took him a long time to do it. It took him, let's see, where is it? 21 the, years yeah. to complete his first 20 panels. Cause the first panel took a year, right? Wasn't that how the competition yeah. worked? Okay. His first yeah. panel took a year. And sure. then to complete this door of 28 panels, it took for forever, right? He, so he spent quite a long time on this. Um, And then he actually built a furnace for casting it in a large hospital in Florence. And his first casting was a little bit of a failure. And then he sort of like rejiggered his design and then fixed everything and then finally cast it. And it used 17 tons of metal to cast these doors. Incredible. Yeah. Is that one of the emails you sent over? Okay. So if you want to see the Abraham Is the Abraham one even on the door? I don't know. So pull pull it up. Okay. Which you can one? pull up the, the first set of doors. First set of doors. Okay. Oh, there's multiple doors. Yeah. So the first set of doors wow. should look f- mostly yeah. bronze. Mm-hmm. So and there's a whole lot of panels. So 28 panels? Yeah. And each three. one should be set in this sort of like figure. There's a, there's a lot of wasted space. Yeah. It's sort of set in a little like uh, flourish. Yeah. So there are, here are the 20 panels. The Annunciation. The Nativity. The Adoration of the Magi, The Dispute with the Doctors, The Baptism of Christ, The Temptation of Christ, Chasing the Merchants Away, I assume, out of the church, Christ Walks on Water, The Transfiguration, The Resurrection of Lazarus, Christ's Arrival in Jerusalem, The Last Supper, The Agonies in the Garden, Christ Captured, The Flagellation, Christ on Trial, Trip to Calvary, Crucifixion, Resurrection, Pentecost. And the eight lower panels show the four evangelists and the church fathers, Ambrose, St. Jerome, St. Gregory, and St. Augustine. What's up? All right. So he made this first set of doors and they're pretty impressive. They, cool. really, yeah. they look really good. Yeah. Can you kind of describe basically what it looks like? Give the, give the listeners a basic so description. Two doors and each door has 14 of these panels. So two columns of seven. So 14 per door. And AJ already said this, but each panel, so it, they're squares. So there's a square and then inside of the square is a, I don't know how to describe that shape. Almost like a frame. It's called a quatrefoil. Oh. There's a, yeah, I was going to say quatrefoil, but I just wanted to make sure. Uh, so there's a quatrefoil inside of this. Are you making that word up too? Nope, that's okay. right. Inside of the square and then inside the quatrefoil is a, a picture. And that's what AJ just described. The quatrefoil looks like, how would you describe it? It start with a square and then the... Point, edges are rounded. Edges are rounded. And then there, there's like a diamond like point on the top, bottom, left and right of each one. That's of a good one. description. I don't know. Just yeah. Qu- yeah. Anyway. yeah I, you should be able to zoom in on that. It's a pretty high, high res image. Uh, it's not high enough. I think to look <laughs> no, at the individual I, I've panels. I've tried to, but yeah. so like the bottom eight, which, so those are the church fathers. Like it's, you mm-hmm. know, it's eight dudes sitting at a chair or sit, sitting at a desk. And then the top 20 are those different scenes. Scenes that from AJ just Christ's life. 
Yeah. Right. Now, standing in front of these doors, it might be a hard, like kind of hard to get what each of those was, I yes. imagine, especially standing from the ground with the panels being so small, having so much wasted space. Um, there, You can still see, I think, a little bit of the gilding on, on the doors here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's still some on there, but a lot of it looks like it's worn off. And so, you know, it's impressive, but it's not the most impressive thing ever. And this is not what he is actually famous for. And these doors no longer are the east oh. doors of the baptistry. Okay. So he was commissioned for a second set of doors for the baptistry. Did you say how tall these are? Oh, man. They look, um, they look massive. Is all they're really big. If okay. you just well, in that picture for... that AJ sent us, there is a an outlet on the bottom left. Is there? Is that what that is? And then there's a gate. So I'm assuming that gate is... I mean, it's got to be yeah. 20 they're feet. They're 17 feet tall. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. They weigh four and a half tons. They're just... They're huge doors. They're uh, Yeah, they're just massive. Yeah. Fellas, the intellectual life is a worthy pursuit. But in the modern world, there are lots of distractions. I mean, the internet is literally a machine that is dedicated to stealing our attention. That's hard to, uh, to keep the intellectual life if you've got something that is constantly uh, stealing your attention. There's been tons of apps that have, out, that have come out that, are, that block websites or limit restriction to websites. But this new app called Canopy, which is a sponsor for today's episode, is awesome. Not only uh, can it block entire websites uh, that are big time sucks like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, but if you're a parent, it can also block explicit content uh, for your student. Uh, if you're a school, uh, it's something that can not only just block entire web pages, but it can block partial web pages. So if there is uh, a web page that has worthy content but has questionable advertisers, uh, Canopy can block that stuff out. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, uh, it's great. And, and the vast majority of Canopy's use case scenario is on mobile because uh, studies have shown that most teenagers now interact uh, with questionable and explicit content on their phones. I remember when I used to teach out of school a bunch of years ago, we tried to do one of these like first generation website blockers and kids could get around it in like 30 seconds. Um, and, uh, uh, but with Canopy, um, uh, there's, uh, the parental controls of it are, uh, are top notch. Um, uh, there is the parental app and then the app that goes on the phone. Students can't, uh, can't get around it. They can't access web pages through like Google Maps, which is even a thing that you can do. Uh, They've thought of everything to make sure that any kind of uh, front-facing or any kind of like web browsing application is going to have Canopy integrated with it. And um, you guys that listen to our podcast, you can go to canopy.us backslash classical and you can get 30 days for free and up to 20% off forever. So if you sign up, you get 20% discount forever. That's great. So canopy.us, that's canopy with a C, dot us, backslash classical for 20 days free and 20% off forever. And you've seen these in person? I've seen them in person. And you are, when you actually go there, the square is usually packed because it's one of the most popular parts of Florence. And there's a, there's a fence that keeps you from going up and touching the doors. And in fact, the doors that are there now are only replicas because the actual doors were undergoing all kinds of issues. There was a flood that washed away a bunch of the panels one year and they had to run through the city and track down all the panels. And then... Wait, really? Yeah, for reals. (laughs) Um, People were rubbing them too much and so the gilding was coming off and there was a lot of expanding and contracting going on because there were certain porous properties in the bronze. There was all kinds of issues that they wanted to save the doors from. So now that all the original panels are in a museum and the replica panels are outside just like the David, right? The David is itself in a museum and where the David used to stand is a replica David. That's, I mean, they're really impressive. They're almost the same thing. They look similar. Okay. So his second commission came in 1425. So yeah, again, a long time after that first commission, when he would, it was about 14, 14, 21, let's see, 1401 when he got the first one. What did I say? Uh, 1403 when he got the official first contract. So this is what, 22 years later. Yeah. Um, this set took him 27 years to finish and he made them better. The subjects for the doors were chosen by the then chancellor of Florence. Um, and instead of these tiny panels, they were, they were much larger and no longer in quatrefoil. So he used the entire thing. Um, these are the uh, doors of paradise. Yep. Okay. So he, each, each panel um, has sort of like 
more than one small episode in it. And the big deal, the reason that they were so shocking to the medieval world is that he used perspective. Yeah. And perspective had only recently been discovered in painting. Mm. Um, I think partially by Brunelleschi and partially by some other folks in there, right? Uh, We can talk more about perspective as Mm. we go along, but it had never before been put into carving like this. And so he used the foundations of perspective to make wonderfully carved doors that looked like slices of real life. And they are absolutely breathtaking. No one had ever seen carvings like this. Now we have, right? You can go into a Chinese restaurant and see things that are very similar, Mm -hmm. but no one had seen anything like this at the time. And to have them suddenly appear on the, the doors of the baptistry, it was completely unique to them. Like Florence had something nobody else had. Crazy. Really impressive. And this is before perspective is used in painting even. So I think it might've been used in painting, but never Never been used in carving. And it was pretty recent, um, at least pretty recent as being, popularized so it's surrounded by a gilt framework of foliage and fruit and there are a lot of little statuettes of prophets and there's 24 busts and the two central ones are portraits of Ghiberti himself so he's got a little self-portrait there that's funny and one of his father hmm. all right so let's take a look at these doors which I sent father you kind of a link uh his his i think it's his goldsmith dad right gotcha. okay so i sent you it says the it's a it's a website and it's got a bunch of different images of this yes um and i will try to have this link yeah we'll put these in the show notes yeah i'll put this i'll put this on our website so if you want to actually see these things you can either google them and have fun there or this particular website has a lot of really good high-res images of the doors that you can take a look at um and wow and i will have that for you so you guys are looking at the entire door and they are bananas it's it's all gold gilt rather than just partially gold gilt like the other bronze mm-hmm, doors they mm-hmm. they look far more brilliant um let us take a look at panel number one which would be creation of adam and eve got it so this is old testament to kind of mirror to be a companion piece to the new testament doors which were the 28 panels okay all right so first panel what do you see a lot of stuff going on <laughs> yeah a lot of gold a lot of gold is that what is happening? Is that God in the sky? God's wearing a hat. I what would is, imagine he's got a hat on and he's he's, he's got sort of a of, wizard halo portal effects well, going on a, behind. He has him. a wand too, doesn't he? What's and that in his right hand? It's probably like I don't know, symbol of dominion or something. Okay. And then he's right. got a little bunch of angels following him around. Yes, up from, on top. Yeah. And then below that, it looks like we've got that's the Eve. creation of Eve coming out of Adam's rib. So that's a that's a common one. And as I was doing research, they didn't even mention this part on Wikipedia of the Adam coming out of or Eve coming out of Adam. It's a really common thing. It looks like she's just drawing Adam's ghost yes. out mm-hmm. of his middle. Yes. But that's Eve. And to Eve show where she right. comes mm-hmm. from. Yes. And right. she's that's, got a bunch of angel babies just like hugging on her. Yeah. Yep. And that's Adam uh, laying down on the floor, mm-hmm. right? So, Sleep. Uh, yeah, exactly. So down to the left, uh, I think you will see another version of Adam. And I think this is his original creation. She's sure. He's pulling him from oh, the dirt. Oh, from the dirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here's God forming Adam from the dust. Right. Yep. And then is that the snake directly above? Then there's yep. the snake. Yeah. With Adam and Eve. Kind of his... way in the back relief. Yeah. yeah. And then on the far right, it looks like Adam and Eve oh, are getting leaving. shocked. Oh, they're wearing um, their, they're they must have already sinned because they're wearing their figs. Are they, their fig outfits. Are they getting kicked out or is I it think just, so. Oh, is that, so the angel's like flying through a door yeah. and he's kind of like Get out telling him to buzz off. Yeah. <laughs> and Adam and Eve look sad. Yeah. All right. That's beautiful. Oh, my word. Anything yeah. else you notice about the doors? About, the, about that panel specifically? There's seashells on the bottom. Oh, yeah. They look like little snowflakes kind of. I do see a snowflake right there. Um, so it's the same thing where it has the whole story in one panel. So instead of needing multiple panels, mm-hmm. you have literally creation of the world to Adam and Eve getting kicked out in one panel. Yep. It's it's the whole story. And that's something that we don't... I, don't, I would say we probably don't see that very no. often in modern depictions of things yeah. where we have several different iterations of the same characters going through a story. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's panel number one. Cool. Let's take a look at panel number two. Just like the, and the leaves are just really impressive. I don't like, just like the detail on this. The detail compared yeah. to his first panels. Yeah. Seems, it's just, yeah, it's yeah. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, he toiled for most of his life on these doors, bet, sure. right? 17 years for the first one. So he would probably would have been around thirties, forties when mm-hmm. he started the second set. And then he toiled way into his late life. Oh, and by the way, he did get rich off of this. Oh, sure. Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. made some cash. Good. Oh, panel number two, sad. All right, so what's in panel number two? So this is Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Mm-hmm. So do we and start from the top? Is that how these work? Sure, however you want to start it. 
So the top there is the two guys sacrificing their little altar. So they're burning stuff on their altar. And it yep. looks like one fire is going higher than the yeah, other. One fire is going higher than the other. <laughs> so and God like is like, better. God is moving towards the higher fire. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's like a, like a mosquito. Kind yeah. Of. <laughs> and then the second, and then the lower fire guy, he's like looking at his fire all sad. Like, and the higher on? fire guy is like looking up at God. And you can kind of see like he's smiling. Right. And then I don't know what's happening on the left. The little hut. Yeah, it looks hut. like uh, that looks like Adam and Eve. Is that Adam and Eve chilling at a hut? I don't know. I think it's just them sort of hanging out. They have a dog. Isn't that mm-hmm. a dog right there? There's a dog. And then okay, so if, the but, sheep. But if you go middle right, that's uh, Cain killing Abel, right? Yeah, yeah that's big the old like cricket bat. And then if you look, God is just behind him, going like, "Oh, God. come on, man!" <laughs> He's yeah, got his right, arm out. He's like, "Bro!" <laughs> right behind him, there's God, basically like um, watching Cain kill Abel. Don't yeah. do murders. Yeah. Oh, no. poor Abel is covering his head. And what's bottom left? Bottom left is, it uh, looks like Abel plowing the fields. Plowing fields. Mm-hmm. Being a farmer. And then, oh no, Cain plowing the fields. Yep. Because Abel's a sh- Abel it was the farmer, or it's the shepherd. And then Abel is probably there to the right. And then that's Abel to On the right with the, with the stick. Yep. Looking at his murder? Isn't yeah. he turned around? Looking. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, I mean, I wonder if that's Cain. It looks like Cain. Like two iterations, so he's yeah. plowing the fields, and then and he's... then God's kicking him out, going. Oh, and I, I wonder if that that like positioning of God is not only saying like, "Hey, man, don't commit the murder," but he is asking that lower right figure. He's telling Cain to, to yeah, go look like, to yeah. go east. Yeah. It looks like he's looking at that one at the lower right. He figure. really does. And yeah. if you do, if you have this be mapped north, east, southwest, Cain is going east out of the mm, out of true. the out of the frame. Yeah, yeah. And there looks like a river, so it's either. My guess is that's Abel's blood flowing down. Oh, good catch. Because it's talks, it does talk about like how the thirsty ground, you know, drank. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it cries seems to be coming from him. where he's He's dying. getting bludgeoned. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, bummer. Okay. So a lot, a lot of detail in yeah. there. Yeah. Tons of detail. All right. Panel number three. Stories of Noah. Oh. <laughs> All right. So stories of Noah. There's some bad parts of his story. There he is. Oh, drunk Noah. <laughs> okay, so let's <laughs> bottom let's right. take this uh, bottom left. Well, we got to start at like okay, bottom left sorry. Right. top. Like where? Uh, so let's let's take this piece by piece. All what right. do you guys see? And you can zoom in on these; they're really high res. So it looks like it does look like a pyramid. It looks like a pyramid, and all the like there's like birds and stuff coming out of it. So it looks like all the animals coming out of the ark, but it's a pyramid. Is is the pyramid the ark? Uh, I assume so. That's what it looks like with all those birds coming out of it, and and then there's like stags and there's an elephant. They're all like standing on it. Yeah, and I don't think all... that's the Tower of Babel. That's what I originally thought oh, was maybe it could be the Tower of Why Babel. Are there birds and... coming out of it. That would that's a good question. Maybe that is just the Ark then. And then there are a bunch of ladies in the middle. In the middle, I they... think that's him and his family probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just ch- oh yeah, because he's in the middle pointing. Right. And then there's like a couple of lions looking hungrily at a at an ox. <laughs> Poor yes. ox. Oh, yeah, that surrounded. ox is like there's nowhere for that ox. Isn't to bad go. news. Above um, that, you have God and his typical yeah. sweet portal. God, I, I love the whole like circular portal thing happening. God's with got God. his portal, and then all the angels sort of surrounding his portal. And God is. It looks like he's pointing down, and saying like, "Boom, animals." Yeah, maybe, or, or maybe it's he's flooding. Um, it's hard to tell if that's just discoloration at the top, or if it's like rain clouds. I think it's just right. discoloration. Yeah, I think it's just discoloration. All right, what else we got? Uh, the bottom left is that so drunk Noah. Is yeah, what said bottom before. left is drunk Noah, and his he's all like hanging out. And the, Ooh, do you notice that the two people there are going to walk backwards and place yeah. that cloak? Oh, oh so, the so they don't see. Yeah, yeah so they're walking backwards yes. to put the cloak over mm-hmm. drunk dad's it's, shame. Yeah. And then to the right, we have the, the sacrifice, right? We have a little lamb there, and then we have a little fire burning. Oh, yeah. Oh, so okay. so if you were to look at the, the thing as a whole, so like basic description is most of the top half is taken up by this crazy bird pyramid, mm-hmm. and then God to the right. Mm-hmm. And then the lower half, you've got drunk Noah on the left and final sacrifice on the right. Yes. Yep. And it looks like above his little hut where he's drunk, he's got a whole bunch of foliage, some, mm-hmm. some leaves and yes. stuff. And he's like literally laying up against his wine keg <laughs> and his robe is all is all opened up and his his shame is on full display. <laughs> you can see his business. Yeah. So uh, and the kid, the, 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 yeah, and the, the sons are walking backwards to cover his father. Two of them are. And then the other one's looking on it. The other one's looking on it. Yeah. Okay. Poor Noah. All right. Let's move on. Stories of Abraham. Stories of Panel Abraham. Panel number four. These are kind of hard to see when you are standing in front of the gates themselves. Well, I bet, yeah. You really have to zoom in to see all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. So this is the oh, this is a new depiction of the sacrifice, uh, sacrifice of Isaac, of Isaac. Of Isaac mm-hmm. at the very top. 
with an so, angel telling Abraham not to kill like, Isaac. Don't do it. Yeah. And then there's a little ram. It looks like that's ram right to the bottom left yeah. of his feet. Mm-hmm. And again, Isaac is jacked, but tiny. <laughs> Maybe the little kids were just jacked back then. Could have been. They must have been. They had a lot of work to do. Yeah, that's true. And then the bottom left. What is that? Is that? I, I can't tell. It looks like maybe that's. Is that the someone telling Abraham he's going to be a dad? And is that Sarah in the background being laughing? Like, There's no tit. way. I think that's probably it. Yeah. Okay. And then what's bottom right? Okay. Mm, somebody's feeding somebody, or it's telling him to like smell this bull. <laughs> <laughs> didn't abraham have a visit from the angels where he sort of fed them prior to them coming and telling him new things am i thinking of the Maybe, wrong person but there's also like it looks like there's a drawer in that side yeah. of that mountain <laughs> i don't yeah, I'm, like, I'm unclear on that one okay but that doesn't look like abraham in the rest of the panels because he doesn't have a beard oh, oh, you're right because right. abraham's got a beard in the other panels Does he look too young in that bottom right one mm-hmm. so could this be I don't know. Is one of them an angel? Oh, oh, no. This is, is this where Isaac is going and he's at the well? And, um, oh. No, isn't there a story where Isaac gets married? He goes to a well and he's like chilling at the well. And then some dude comes up and he gives him water. And the guy's like, you're going to marry my daughter. Doesn't that happen? No? Mm. I don't know. I do know that all of the trees look very Italian. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, those are, um, yeah, as you look at these listeners, you should note that trees don't really look like that in the States, really. But in Italy, the trees really do look like this. They look like all the old paintings where the trees are perfectly manicured and beautiful. It's just the natural trees in the in the land. Unless I'm being totally bamboozled by all the Italians. Yeah, I wonder if that's Isaac when he goes searching for a wife. Because he's got his donkey and he looks like he's got like a, a bag full of uh, his like, you know, travel stuff. And I wonder if I that's know. just a drawer full of wives. <laughs> is that what that is? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, it's the well. It's just, you know. It's, a, a drawer of well? Yeah, it's just a well. It's, you just open it up and there's some water in there. Okay. All right. Panel five. There's only 10 panels. Don't worry, listeners. But if, I mean, probably the ideal listening experience is. Pull up these panels. Is pulling up these panels. Yeah, and if you, if you watch on YouTube, is there any chance we can get these? That'd be a lot for Thomas to do. Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm doing all that? Okay, never mind. So this Just is Isaac with Esau and Jacob. Yeah, and here I think is where we see pers- the first few yeah. as far as perspective yeah, yeah. goes. You're seeing mostly mountains. You see some things in the background. Here is perspective on full display. Yeah, this is amazing. All right, so... So this is where we should maybe talk a little bit more about perspective. So the perspective tool they were using was called like single vanishing point perspective, mm-hmm. where way deep, like right in the center of the picture is the vanishing point that all lines kind of lead to. There's also double point perspective, which is basically a horizon line, and it lets you set things obliquely to the viewer, right? So a you're looking at like, say, the corner of a building. Um, I think that really was developed a little bit later. But this single vanishing point perspective, you will see, again, in full display here. You've got, if you're, if you're looking right onto the panel, which I guess is the only thing you can do, uh, you have a, a series of three arches in a building heading backwards in perfect perspective, and then a floor that is set into a grid, again, showing that new perspective. And then the figures are set into different pieces of the building to show their relative size and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do you guys see here on this panel? This is Jacob and Esau, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's start in the top right. I don't know. That's it's God or an angel talking to a person on a roof. A person on a roof. Is that a lady? Looks like it. So I'm not quite sure about that. Um, and then below that, it looks like Esau in his furry coat is going off hunting. He's like trudging up right. a hill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then bottom right looks where it looks like he's blessing. Yeah. This is where it looks one like sons, Jacob right? is blessing or sorry. This is, looks like where he, uh, Isaac is blessing his son. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's, I guess the, the mom standing back there. I'm trying to look for like the selling the birthright or any of that stuff. I don't like the bowl of soup. Yeah. yeah I'm looking for the bowl of soup too. The, I don't see it. it there's the some dogs m- right in the front and center dogs in the front. What's in the middle? Is that? Yeah, what's this? Oh, you know, is that the soup in the middle? Could so be. Looks like a... 
like a table, like a kitchen Yeah, there's table. a guy sitting on the left, and then the one on the right. Maybe that's Esau coming in. He's like, dude, I'm so hungry. And then uh, he looks like the one on the right climbing up the hill. Yeah, so, that so that, that's him. probably the selling the birthright, right okay. in the middle. But it's like obstructed by what's in the foreground. Right. Which is... Which is the dogs and... That's Isaac, right? Um, old Isaac uh, talking to Jacob, right? But you would it, think Esau would have the dogs. True. But, don't, but he is not wearing the furry coat. He's not wearing the furry coat. He looks like the same one who's getting blessed on the right. Yes, it does. All right, so let's say that that's Jacob in the middle. And then who are the... And then who are the ladies on the left? The one with the, with the sack of grain on her head. Um, I don't know, maybe representing, I don't know, plentiful food. Okay, and then who's the lady chilling on the, um, the dais in the back? I don't know. I haven't been able to find... Yeah, interesting. ...who those people are quite. I was hoping you guys could help me out. <laughs> <laughs> nope we are zero help yeah so some of these things but again, the perspective but, but again yes that perspective is interesting and like having the foreground isaac kind of like obstructing a little bit in the background it almost makes you want to say like hey man just move out of the way right, which so is can, yeah is um you know uh, a good sign that the perspective is working yeah and even the archways have perspective yeah. and the crazy thing is this probably took him about two years it's, to finish oh, or two two and a half years he spent 27 years on the second pe- set of panels mm-hmm. so it took him a long time all right next panel stories of joseph stories joseph. of joseph okay here again is an even more pronounced wow. perspective look at that you have a basic description of the panel. On the left, you have some sort of structure with people kind of standing on a porch. Um, yep. Lots of figures in the foreground kind of hanging out. And then you have a big sort of like a col- Colosseum Roman arch style thing. Right. And then th- that takes up most of the the like center right foreground. And then in the far back, you see a mountain with some people. Looks like they're having a party. Mm-hmm. All right. What are you guys seeing here? So whose story was this again? This is Joseph. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it looks like he's being sold into slavery right front and center, or front, front left, because there's a dude with, like, a bag of money in his hand. And there looks like they're taking his fancy cloak off of Joseph. <laughs> so yep. they're, like, stripping his Technicolor dream coat. And there's a dude with a bag. Yeah, so they're selling him. Okay. Okay. That's in that, like, mid-left one? Yeah, right, right in the front. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think the people on the porch, I think that's his family coming later to him and asking oh, for... Oh, and he's sitting on the throne. And he's it, sitting on the throne. There's his brother, like, bowing before him. Yep. Yep. Okay, that's fair. Um, I think the... I honestly think that the Colosseum is to show that this is Roman. Mm. Mm. Was he in Rome? No, he's in Egypt. He was in Egypt. Egypt yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. They didn't have, they didn't have Colosseums No, like they this. didn't. I mean, um, let's see. What's on the... What's on the bottom left with those like old wise dudes and looks like they're looking at a sack of grain. What do you mean? Bottom left? Yeah. yeah. The two dudes with beards and there's a little guy pointing to that sack of grain on the ground. It's the guy to his right is tearing his uh, robe. Well, the guy, wait, the, uh, isn't that the selling into slavery? Oh, oh, oh that's oh. what I thought you said. Yeah. So that, Which, that's him being So sold. that whole scene is the selling into slavery. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then bottom right, I think is just the having plentiful food yeah. in Egypt. So everyone's coming in. And then uh, I'm, a su- right. I'm surprised that there's no um, Potiphar and Potiphar's wife. Although that could be Potiphar's wife. If you look in one of the arches, the arch on the, on the right, there's like a lady talking to a guy. Yeah, I see I that. wonder if that's a Potiphar wife situation. Top right, it looks like they're exchanging some sort of pot. The way, way in the background. Wait, top you know, right? on top of the mountain? Yeah, on top of the mountain. It looks like a little vase. You yeah, so isn't, so isn't that the story where it's like, you stole my gold cup and you have got to come back. Remember, like, uh, Joseph sp- smuggles the golden cup into his brother's oh, uh, saddlebags. And then when they're going back it. to, uh, when they're going back to Israel, uh, uh, that's like, bah, no, you stole goods. You got to come back. You know and what? Tr- stand trial. That's the bottom left. You can see the cup sitting on top of the, the little, oh. the bag of grain right there. Is that a cup right there? Yeah, you can see it. Oh, and that's when they're coming back and he's pointing it out? Yep. Okay. Um, so maybe that isn't the selling of slavery then. Maybe that's like him getting his Maybe brother. the slavery is the top. I don't know. Top right. Could yeah. be. Okay. There's, a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on yeah. here. <laughs> that is the correct takeaway. I wonder if there's a way to read these like a, a clockwise or counterclockwise that we're just missing. Nah. Okay. Maybe. Here, maybe. Someone will... Moses on Mount Sinai. More straightforward to do the last one. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, we did Stories of Joseph. So we're on panel seven. All right, right at the top, there is Moses and God is in his portal again. 
Or maybe it's not God because he doesn't have a beard. He does have God's hat. Oh no, he's got a he's got a beard. A oh beard no, there. you're right. There's a beard. I, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a beard. And he, so God's coming out of his portal and with he's, a whole train of angels. Yeah, with he's, whole he's train coming of angels, with like buddies this yeah, time. Yeah, they and they've got trumpets and everything. And God's just handing him a tablet. He's yep. like, here you go, here, man. Here they are. Yeah. Yep. Did it. And Abraham is you see thanking now. God. But then right below him, there's like somebody hiding their face in the cleft of the rock. That's probably I, I think what it also is Abraham. Is, it, yeah, it's yeah, it's a. Uh, He's coming down and he's saying, "Oh no, you guys are worshiping the calf." That's probably yeah, possible. He's he's got his hand to his head in distress. Mm-hmm. And then in in the back left, there's the camp. Yes. And then you have all the Israelites in the very front. Where's the golden calf? There's no golden. You calf. You know, I looked. I don't think it's there. I think it's probably in the mix of where these people are are having a party. And mm-hmm. I wonder. I wondered if Giberti just didn't, didn't want, to. want to make a golden calf because it was it would have literally been golden. Right. So he himself would have been making a golden, a golden calf to put yeah. on this thing. And I wonder if he just didn't want to do that. Um, but they all look like they're freaking out. They are freaking out. Um, well, because, you know, they're getting told. I also think that's the Red Sea there on the left. Oh, yeah, that's oh, possible. There's water right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a dude in armor who is cowering, absolutely cowering. There's like a little baby next to him, too. There's a little baby next to him. Standing um, upright, which is, you know, mm-hmm. impressive, but... That's probably a toddler. You think and, so? Yeah. Um, no. But yeah, so people, they're around the mountain. They're all looking up. I don't know who that dude is, but he is clearly like... Um, losing his mind. Losing his mind, and he's wearing armor. And also, it looks like there's some dude towering over him, like... Just looking down at yeah, him. Yeah, it looks like he's about to slap him. I wonder if that's Moses and Aaron. Yeah. If Moses is like, hey, bro. Calm down. And that's Aaron's priestly garments. Mm-hmm. Although he looks more like a soldier than a priest. That's true. Cool. Okay, that's Moses. That's okay. Moses. We got... Three left. Stories of Joshua, panel eight. All right. So, oh, wow. This one looks more well well preserved. preserved. Yep. All right. So there they are uh, doing the trumpets and going around Jericho seven times. And the walls are falling down. You can actually see the cracks in the walls and you see the one uh, tower, like the one tower Uh, at the top that's sort of toppling. It's falling apart. And I'm assuming that's Joshua in the middle looking pretty fresh. (laughs) (laughs) Is he he, he prancing in this picture? Look at that. I think he's he's feeling himself. And uh, real feeling really good in that yeah. little cloak right there. But he's they, not even blowing on his trumpet. No, he's nope. like, just but the best. Of, uh, they got the ark, the the ark of the covenant, and they got the trumpets. Uh-huh. And it's not just soldiers. There's like ladies with their babies walking around the uh-huh. uh, Jericho, uh-huh. and Jericho is just falling apart. Falling apart yeah. And Joshua is having it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, All right. What do we go below that? Um, we got a camp. A lot of people talking about a lot of stuff. Got a camp, and then the Ark of the Covenant is again on the left, and there I'm assuming is Joseph standing there, mm-hmm. um, talking about stuff. You mean Joshua? Joshua. Sorry, Joshua. Yeah. Yep. On the throne. So shown thing? at the bottom, yeah. God's people to cross the Jordan River, oh. seen in the middle of a river stream. Oh, and they're getting the rocks to build the um, the memorial. memorial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then Joshua and his army take over the entire city. Gotcha. Shown at top, they're victorious in taking the city. So, yeah, they're crossing the, the river, and they're getting their stones to make their little altar of remembrance. Mm-hmm. And who's that one girl that everyone sort of is looking at? Where? On the bottom right. She's kind of looking up and to the right, and she's sort of surrounded by... Um, she's sort of set apart from everybody, and everyone's kind of looking at her. I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the, the I couldn't find sources that gave me specifics on that. Yeah. Graham, AJ, before we go any further, I want to thank our Patreon sponsors for making this episode possible. Uh, our Patreon sponsors support us at one of four levels. I'm going to go through them right now because I think many people listening... They want to be a part of this as well. They want to become patrons as well. Uh, we have a $2 a month tier. Those are Ghibellines. At $2 a month, you get access to all of our episodes ad-free. You also get access to previous uh, uh, content that we've done, mostly at uh, conferences. Um, so you get ap- uh, access to many other uh, bonus episodes as well. At $10 a month, you get access to our our uh, in-between episodes, which we record after every single episode that we record. You also get access to our monthly AMAs, which I think are really funny. And some of our best content, in addition to all the same benefits at the $2 a month tier, you get access to ad-free episodes. Above that, at the $20 a month tier, you uh, at that point are giving input into the podcast. You are helping us come up with future topics to come up with future merchandise in addition to all benefits from the tiers below that. 
And finally, and you heard about this uh, in recent episodes, we have added a Helios' Acolytes of Love tier at $100 a month. At this level, you are a true believer and you are the most faithful of our listeners. At this tier, you get all the benefits from lower tiers. You also get... I can't believe I'm saying these words that you get a Helios acolytes of love crew neck sweatshirt. You get Helios acolytes of love Crocs and you get uh, a free uh, copy of all future merchandise as we create it. So incredible, incredible benefits at this, at this level that is only for $100 a month. You can find all of this at patreoncom slash classical stuff. Thanks again to our patrons and um, thank you all for listening. Okay. Okay. That and was then- pretty straightforward. Yep, nine is one of my favorites. Oh, David, David and Goliath. Goliath. Okay. Oh, rough day, Goliath. <laughs> okay, so this <laughs> we have we have a lot going on. There seems to be somebody like a big commander in the middle middle left, kind of telling everyone go forward. Right. And then is that Goliath? Looks like Goliath. He's well, wearing the same armor. Yep, he does look like oh, he's wearing okay. the same armor. And then at the bottom, you have David getting like. His hacksaw just, just going to, absolutely right. going to town on Goliath's head. <laughs> so yeah, he's getting he's getting worked over pretty good, and the Israelites look like they're doing a pretty good job. This one doesn't seem to have multiple iterations; it just seems to be the one, one single scene. scene. No, yeah. I think that the that's Goliath on the left standing up and mocking God's people. And then the the and foreground then is the foreground feet. is like this is what the, happens. The but result. You would think there would be the slingshot scene. That's not right. in here. I don't think so. A lot of swords. A lot yeah. of swords. And then there's a city in the background and yeah. And then there's, so there's a big slaughter going on, but right. on the left, there's like two guys being like, dude, we should probably get out of here. <laughs> in the very front of the line <laughs> yeah. too. That's funny. Okay. And then there's a scene and then what is that? The, what are those people in the scene? Are they like, are they feasting? Where? Uh, right. Back? Sort of in between the two hills. Oh, it looks like they are also fighting. Mm. Yeah. They have shields they have and armor on horseback okay. and. They have the river stones in the bottom left, too. Like oh, yeah. Yep, left. there's the little river stones. Oh, and it looks like his sling oh. is right by uh, David's foot right as he's foot. hacking off yeah. Goliath's Oh, yeah, head. I see that. <laughs> All right. He's putting his he's putting his back into it. <laughs> he really Seriously. is going to town. <laughs> Man. Okay, and then the final scene. Ooh. Solomon and Queen of Sheba. And this is, once again, perspective on true display. Oh, my word. This is amazing. There's a huge temple sort of in the middle with Aww. multiple arches and see even some Gothic arches, which are hard to do in perspective. And then on the left, there's more buildings. And on the right, there's even more buildings and dead center, Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. And they're holding hands. And they're holding hands. Yeah. And her like little ladies in waiting, standing behind her are kind of looking at each other like, I don't know if this is. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> yeah. But they're holding the like train of her. Yes, they're holding the train of her robe. And then um, Solomon's dudes are hanging out behind him, also looking somewhat concerned. And then I'm assuming those are all Solomon's wives in the background. On the With their, like their heads the right. covered and yeah, all the, the extra right. ladies. Yeah. And then there's the, the guys like playing music. You got some musicians mm-hmm. playing the little drums. Uh huh. I feel then, like those little drums are kind of unimpressive for a king like Solomon. Yeah, they're that just is like true. little it's, little bongos, <laughs> like he's doing beat poetry. <laughs> uh huh. And then are those Queen of Sheba's people all on the left side? Yeah, or and it looks the, like they are bringing their horses. Yeah, bringing in yep. gifts maybe. And yep. he's got what's that animal on the bottom left? It's like a badger. What is that thing? Oh, it wow. could be a dog. <laughs> kind of look like a dog. It could be like a, just Let his best. Let me zoom in at 200 here. Or an anteater? <laughs> yeah, it that's, that's a weird like looking thing. Anteater. Yeah. That's a weird looking animal. Yeah. And then there's horses and um, there's like a looks like a little baby right in the bottom right. Bottom right, yeah. Okay. This is cool. This is cool. They're impressive. They are yep. super impressive. It is also impressive that he carved these and these yeah. are all done in casting. And the the way it got finally got its name is Michelangelo himself saw the doors and said these are fit to be the gates of heaven cool. like wow. the gates of paradise That's cool. and so obviously these were way better and they put them on the east doors because holy smokes oh, yeah. these are clearly like a league above that first Abraham one oh yeah it's just yeah oh, well, it, it, they're not even it, playing the same game if it was over the course of twenty years then like he got better over time he is sure that what did. you're saying yeah yeah, yeah sure. Maybe. Are you moved to tears? No, my eye is burning suddenly. Oh, Sorry. It's, uh, it's so allergy season. In yeah. later life, he got married in uh, 1417, so this is before his second set of doors, to a 16-year-old daughter of a wealthy comb maker. Uh-oh. <laughs> Guy makes combs. Okay. Um, they had two kids, Tommaso and Vittorio, Tommaso and Ghiberti w- w- grew rich uh, in lands. What'd you say? Tommaso, Tommaso. Is, a, is a great name. That's Tommaso. Thank you. It's like he's trying to say tomato and just kind of screwed it up. Um, 
So Ghiberti was rich at this point. He had a lot of land and he had some government bonds in his name that would eventually mature. And just he was an investor like dude was smart with his cash. He was not messing around. He lived to 75 and okay. finally died of fever. Vittorio, what? his son, did become a goldsmith and bronze caster after his father, but never really rose to fame. Man, that is hard. That's a bummer, bummer right? that one. Right. Maybe he just didn't pursue all of the artistic things that his father did, like yeah. he didn't paint, or he just didn't have a taste for it. Who knows? Maybe he's just kind of lazy and wanted to capitalize on his dad's. Who, who knows why he didn't rise to the same sort of fame. Tommaso helped for a while, but sort of disappeared in documents after 1447. We don't really know much of what happened to him. We know that he eventually did have a kid, so this would have been Ghiberti's grandson, uh, who was a caster, who worked in metallurgy and stuff, and made cannonballs and artillery. What? So he sort of went away from the artistic side and Different capitalized direction. on the militaristic side. Sure. All right, so impact of these doors we will be they're pretty heavy so probably pretty heavy impact yeah probably <laughs> waka waka oh my word um so these doors are pretty important right they're the first instance of perspective in classical work but you're gonna it's gonna create a bottleneck of people trying to get into church because everyone's gonna be stopping and looking at it but if you're there every sunday right i suppose yeah, yeah. it's know. it's wide enough so <laughs> okay yeah, I, I'm. This will be my companion episode. Will be talking about Rodin's Gates of Hell, oh, which yeah, were an answer in sculpture several hundred years. Now, later. did he actually reference these doors? Like, was he actually in conversation with the doors? Yeah. Oh, cool. He's. I mean, he doesn't really reference the doors. He is. He said, "Well, the gates of paradise have been made. I'm going to make the gates of hell." Rough. And so he makes his doors as a response to these doors, and they are both breathtaking. And we'll talk about Rodin's doors next time. Um, what? strikes me most about these is that they're for the general public and that he gave so much of his life to these things. If you were, so let me, let me phrase it doors. this way. It's not like right. the center yeah. altarpiece. Right. It's, you no. walk through them to go somewhere. And Brunelleschi was obviously feeling like they weren't up to his talents and went and made the dome mm -hmm. of the Duomo and was super famous, probably right. more so famous than Ghiberti for what he did mm -hmm. rather than what Ghiberti did. Mm -hmm. Um, if you were given a commission to make doors for a cathedral, mm -hmm. how would you guys go about doing it? Like, how would you approach the project? Uh, quit on day one. <laughs> uh, assuming I have the talent sufficient to it. I mean, the, Bob, like taking scenes from Bible stories, I think is a good way to go. Yeah. And like interpreting it that way. I think way. that's true. Do you think there's a way to revive this kind of artistry in American culture where we have like contests of this magnitude. Maybe. I mean, we can barely get churches to like not meet out of gyms. Right. So I'm imagining what they're, this will seem petty, but like, what are they wearing when they go to church? Right. They're wearing their finest clothes. Right. Like you wouldn't make doors like this for the place where people dress in jeans to go to church on Sunday. Like it, it just wouldn't work. Right. Mm -hmm. But do you th what comes first? Wouldn't you make that church and people would be like, oh, dang, I, I got to like dress up. Uh, maybe I can't go to that church looking like a schlob. Well, part of me just can't imagine like the church that does that would be like, it has to be an old church. I don't like, I'm having trouble imagining something new being made that is like this. Like you would, you would dress up and have a very solemn service because it's a 500 year old church or a thousand year old church or whatever. Mm hmm. In that you can't replicate that just by making new doors that look like that. You know what I mean? There's more to it than just that. Um, I think maybe our closest approximation is monuments, right? Like we built a monument to the Twin Towers when they went down. And I think it's that same sort of thing where someone will put in designs and then get the commission to build a monument. And I think that's maybe the closest that we get to asking for this level of artistry from our citizens. Yes. Like, I think the best, the closest we get in Austin is the Capitol building. Yes. Uh, well, I'm, ha I'm having trouble here because we, there are artists who make art, but that's different than something that's for public consumption like this. Mm -hmm. That is the, the fact that this is just supposed to be like on Sunday, this is the door you see. Like, I'm having trouble understanding that. We have, like, there are exhibits. You can go to the Blanton Museum right now and see art, but that's different than... Like the door I open on Sunday morning is a literal work of art. Is, a, is graffiti the closest? 
No, because graffiti doesn't take the time that this does. It's not commissioned. No. Typically. But even... Um, oh, Graffiti's got a subversive yes. uh, element to it. Right. Which this doesn't. Even if it is commissioned, it still yeah. has that subversive Which even when it. this was commissioned, it was classical. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but Banksy's Ex- not spending 20 years on his on a single work of art. Right. We just don't have the same relationship with space and sacred space that I don't know. I just don't care. As I much. also think it's a, a relationship. There's no, with, there's no sacred space. Yeah. Right. Like, I also yeah. think it's a relationship with time. Mm-hmm. Right. We, the, the Duomo was finished over at least a couple generations. Yeah. Right. Where they, they began building the cathedral before they even had the science to do the dome. They couldn't even finish it because they didn't know how. And it was still so ambitious a project that they started knowing that they didn't know how to finish it. Yeah. And they, I feel like having those, like being in an area where your architecture, most of your architecture has come from ages before you, right? There are, there are buildings that are hundreds of years old that you've seen, and there's this huge explosion of artistry around you. I think that they thought in much more as like a piece of history as opposed to America where everything moves so fast that I don't think we think about 10 generations from now, except as it regards. And we don't live in the ruins of works that are better than what we can do. Right. Right. So they were living it with, so in Rome, you've got, um, all these different, you know, Rome structure that has a dome they can't reproduce. Yeah. And so then you're looking at this and you're like, all right, we need to figure this out. And then when you do, then you can apply yourself to trying to copy that. We don't have, that because here, if, um, you know, if anybody wants to start something, it's like, keep going West and there's like empty places to start stuff. Uh, we just do, and we don't really have, I mean, I suppose you might, you could say that in some of our older American cities, like a New York or a Boston, you, we kind of have an aesthetic there that can be reproduced and copied, but it's not, I mean, we just don't have the same relationship with Time, yeah, exactly. Time. Like no one's, no one's willing to spend their entire life to do something that, um, is either isn't going to be done by the time they die, or they're not going to be able to, like, reap all the rewards of. Right. They finish it when they're seventy. Yeah. So why, what do you? Why? Yeah. And I feel like we're not willing to commission works that take that long either. After twenty years, you think they would have pulled the commission from him, but he didn't finish until twenty-seven years. Mm-hmm. But he I mean, did have the individual panels. Like there was proof that it was going in the right direction. Right. Right. But you don't think people would have gotten impatient and pulled the funding way earlier? We talked about this in the patronage episode. Like it was so much a part of the like to have the prestige of being the person patronizing, like literally paying for right. the guy making these doors would be a huge credibility to that family and if which is the same with being a patron for our podcast yes, exactly. the credibility right. have <laughs> patreon.com slash classical yeah. stuff but that's so someone someone else would have supported him there was proof that he was good at what he did and he had done you know if he did one panel people would see we should stick with this guy i don't know there are I, i've just googled this there are like beautiful cathedrals in the united states too there's uh, uh, the national cathedral in washington in uh, St. Louis, there's one, St. Louis Cathedral. Um, anyway. But what's the most recently built? Like, my assumption is that those well, are still up to 80, 100, 200 years old, right? Yeah. Uh, like, I think the one I was thinking of is the Crystal Cathedral. You guys know the yeah. Crystal Cathedral? Yes. But that one's even already, like, kind of well, didn't, didn't have gaudy. Get, didn't they go bankrupt? Oh, maybe. Oh, I had to look this up. I don't know if it's... But it's just, yeah, we just... Church. Massive... Religious building projects are, um, uh, I think of like the mega churches that exist that have millions of dollars to pour into these things are making like youth group spaces with aquariums. And I wonder, <laughs> I, I mean, if we think about it, the... I, I literally am thinking of a church that I know that had a youth group space with an aquarium. The The family that was commissioning artworks was, what was their name again? In In Florence. Oh, the, 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 the Medici's. Yeah, the Medici's. Medici's. So they, they partially commissioned these artworks for the prestige of having them done in yes. their name, mm-hmm. right? Yes. I, and the people who have the money to do that now are corporations. But corporations are beholden to their shareholders, and their shareholders aren't necessarily on board for big art projects. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I think that doesn't Progressive, the, the insurance company, have a big art gallery? I think they spend part, a part of their proceeds I mean, I know art. Walmart does. Which is strange, but we don't see these big public works necessarily put on 
Yeah. I mean, we see maybe or the Walton uh, family has. The there's Walton like family. baseball the fields. fields. Yeah, yeah, and that's probably the closest we. Uh, that's something that we we could probably think of is like when sports stadiums need to happen. You know, then you get Jerry World in Arlington, or you get a lot of if like Fenway Park had to be decommissioned or 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 when when the Yankee Stadium had to be rebuilt. Like there was a huge. That was a big sort of maybe the closest we could get to where everybody cared about the commission yeah yeah um yeah. but you got to think maybe it's like billionaires who uh, want to make beautiful public spaces i don't know there's maybe something an interesting podcast episode and going and looking at the often villainized robber barons like the carnegie Mel- yeah. carnegie melons and the or no uh, dale 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 carnegie oh. and um rockefeller mm-hmm. because they did sponsor um public works right and they sponsored you know um these these places that are cultural institutions today. Andrew Carnegie is the Andrew Carnegie. Dale Carnegie is the author. Oh, thank you. Yes, Andrew Carnegie. Um, <clears throat> and this was, um, you know, J- J.P. Morgan, like the actual guy. Yeah. Um, it was. What's the what's the term? Like the, the, they wanted to live on a reverse tithe, so they would live on ten percent and then give away the ninety percent. That was mm-hmm. Carnegie's goal. I, I forget if it's. I think it's Carnegie's book plate is of. It's like the lamp of learning, but like he's pouring in the oil, right? Like so to to allow there to be education in the united states it's profit that's Mm -hmm. being put into these institutions Hmm. so you know for there are bad things to concentrated wealth but there are good things if they're good people who have that money yes yeah and that's sort of again bad things with the medicis but um that concentrated wealth same with Mm -hmm. but think of the uh how much pushback there is on the idea of capital campaigns or building buildings or uh, i just you know the number of times that the desire is to build a building and the response is, but we could use this money for yeah. something good. You almost need the ego for a building to have, to say something. Cause if you have a committee making a monument, you're going to have like a boring bland, a, or you're going to have some sort of like, yeah, like a big stone with names on it. Yes. Right. Or, mm-hmm. or whatever you need to have somebody that's got a bit of that sort of swagger vision. That's willing to sort of put them, themselves in the line to have something that goes out there. So I guess architecture, you know, that kind of, these sort of celebrity architects. Yeah. So this was sort of part one in a series and it focused only on the doors because that's mostly what Ghiberti did. In right. fact, his dad said, if you can get this commission, like if you can do these doors, you'll never have to make another pair of pearl shaped earrings. Like you, you won't have to <laughs> do earrings know. anymore, buddy. Me and you will be done with goldsmithing earrings. And that was his motivation. Was, that's right. We right. are, and we are hunting for that one podcast episode. <laughs> that's it. We're done. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Uh, the next episode in the series will be about the Rodan's gates of hell and Rodan. Dan did more than just the gates of hell. He actually did quite a few sculptures. And so his episode will be a little bit more about him as an artist and a little bit less about just his gates of hell, although they'll hold a prominent Of course role. it is, because he's more of a modern person. He wants yep. people to care about him. Yep. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, you are. Is that really grumpy doll? Yeah. A little grumpy <laughs> doll at the end there. All right, thanks. Well, this has been Classical Stuff You Should Know. Um, thank you for listening. You can find us on classicalstuff.net or on Twitter, CLL. C-L-S-S-C-A-L stuff. Um, You can patronize us on Patreon um, and you can commission us to make more portals of knowledge Mm -hmm. with our podcast episodes. Uh, You can find out all about the tiers on there. Um, And you can email us at theguys at classicalstuff.net and we will see you, talk to you next week. Ciao. Bye.